My name is Rob Arnfield and I'm a attending physician in LHSC's emergency departments, both at Victoria Hospital and University Hospital. And I also work as an intensivist in the Victoria Hospital ICU and the Cardiac Surgery Recovery Unit at UH. So point of care ultrasound, uh, also called bedside ultrasound, uh, is carried out by the caring physician for a patient right at the bedside of the patient. Uh, this technology and this tool allows us to see what we previously tried to feel or only listen to using more primitive techniques to assess patients who are unstable in the emergency department. All right, so we move it on to the sweep of the left upper quadrant. So just identify the landmarks that we need there for the free fluid. Where are you going to be looking? Sure, so I'm going to be looking at the stripe in between the uh, spleen and the kidney. Just trying to work my way around some ribs there. That's your, your kind of landmark, you're getting a good double density of the kidney. I think that kind of tells you in the right spot to start looking for fluid. Now you're going to make a move to try and find your interface between the two. Uh, ultrasound, like many parts of medicine, including the physical exam, is operator dependent. It's the quality of what one person gets or one physician gets may be different than the quality of what another physician gets. So rigorous training standards are a necessity for running an ultrasound program like this. And we follow the rigorous standards that have been endorsed by the Canadian Emergency Ultrasound Society. The trouble is, or one of the challenges is in an ultrasound training program, is to ensure that once people are trained that they continue to do uh, quality work. And that requires a quality assurance program. We've recently launched such a program here at LHSC in the emergency departments and in the ICUs. This program, it allows us to supervise the work that people are doing with ultrasound by enabling archiving digitally of the images. And we can review these images at a later time, a day later, or a couple days later, and ensure that the both the quality of the images acquired and the accuracy of their interpretation meets the standard uh, of the original training requirements and the standard of care uh, amongst our, our peer group. Okay, so comparing this to the scan that you just did, we see another good view of the right upper quadrant. Again, identifying the double density of our kidney, the liver, and I'm just going to slow this down a little bit just for review, and we can very easily see that in your area of interest, the area between the liver and the kidney, we have this dark, dark stripe all around the liver. That clearly is free fluid sitting in the unit. So we've been fortunate here at LHSC to acquire new ultrasound equipment in the past several months at the emergency departments. These new machines have uh, tremendous capabilities. They're quite miniature in size, they're extremely portable and versatile, can be wheeled into tight patient encounters, and are even wirelessly enabled so they transmit their images across the wireless network so that these images can be properly archived and reviewed for quality. So this is a great case we had the other day. A patient came in uh, in uh, a critical state with uh, dangerously low, uh, life-threatening low blood pressure and uh, complaining of vague symptoms of weakness and uh, some difficulty breathing, which the list of possibilities is quite long for what cause, could cause those kind of things. So in assessing these patients routinely, we often assess the heart and if there's a fluid collection around the heart. and which can cause those symptoms and is a life-threatening condition in some instances. Here we have a, a great picture obtained by uh, one of our residents, Dr. On, uh, who captured this pericardial effusion, um, which was a complete uh, game-changing diagnosis for this patient and changed the direction of care entirely right at the bedside performed by the emergency physician.